Dear viewers, today I am going to present a paper entitled Paleolithic Cultures of India. Now come to the introductory part. The term prehistory refers to the period when there was no written record. Understanding and reconstruction of the life ways of ancient men during that period is based on the analysis of the material remains of their activities such as tool making, animal hunting, food gathering, etc. through archaeological explorations and excavation. The prehistoric period has been mainly divided into three ages, namely the Stone, Bronze and Iron Ages, based on the changes in technology and social and cultural developments. The Stone Age is divided into three periods, namely Paleolithic, Mesolithic and Neolithic. The people living during that period made tools and implements on stones which were easily available in the surroundings, besides using wood, bamboo, bones, etc. for making tools. However, these are perishable materials. Not much evidence of these tools are available in archaeological context. Now come to the another point, Paleolithic culture of India. Robert Bruce Foote, a British geologist, discovered and identified the first Paleolithic tool in the Indian subcontinent in 1863 at the village of Pallavaram near Madras, now Chennai, and laid the foundations of the prehistory in India. Since then, prehistoric archaeologists have located hundreds of prehistoric sites in different parts of India and are attempting to understand the life ways of prehistoric people. The Paleolithic sites are found throughout the Indian subcontinent in a variety of ecological contexts, including mountain regions, hill slopes, alluvial settings, coastal plains, and in rock shelters. The archaeological record clearly indicates that Acheulean was the earliest days of hominid occupation of the subcontinent. The Acheulean site of Ishampu has been dated to 1.2 million years by ESR electron spin resonance dating method. Now come to the next point, the Lower Paleolithic Cultures of India. Traditionally, the Lower Paleolithic evidence in India has been divided into two groups, that is the Soanian or Soanian Mot 1 and the Acheulean Mot 2, based on distinct typological and technological ground on both the industries. ISL Mobius suggests that the Soanian is a part of the so-called Asian Sopar Shopping Tool Complex along with the Anathian in Burma, Skoktanian in China, Tampanian in Malaysia and Pajitanian in Java and forms a separate entity from the contemporary Acheulean Lower Paleolithic traditions. However, recent studies show that most of the Mot 1 evidences post-date the mode to assemblages in India. Now come to the Soanian culture. The Soanian culture term after the river Soan or Soan, a tributary of the Indus, came into limelight through the Yale Cambridge expedition led by Ice D. Terra and T. T. Peterson in 1939. The evidence of this culture is found at a number of sites in the Siwalik Hills in Northwest India and Pakistan. Three developmental stages of the Soanian culture have been distinguished on the basis of the artifacts found in the river terraces and correlated with the phases of the four pole Pleistocene glaciations identified by them in the Himalayas and the Siwaliks. 
the earliest on the earliest days of the sequence on Terrace 1 was found in the boulder conglomerate of the second glacial age in the Potwar Plateau in the same deposit though at discrete localities Acheulean artifacts were also located the Terrace 1 was dated to the second interglacial age and the faunal remains from this deposit include horse, buffalo, straight tux elephant and hippopotamus which suggests an environmental characterized by perennial water source, tree vegetation and grass tapis. The terrace too with gravel at the base and lois on top dated the third glacial period yielded a Julian and late zone A industries from the basal gravel which are comprised to refined pebble soapers and lavalua plaques. The late zone B industry characterized by lavalua flax and blades with complete absence of Acheulean elements was found overlying the level of lois and the fauna, horse, bobbits, camels and wolf of this horizon. The divisions of Sohanian that is early Sohan, late Sohan A and late Sohan B and their correlations with the climatic situation were found invalid during the subsequent research carried out by British archaeological mission to Pakistan led by R. W. Daniel and Ice and Randall. B. and Mishra has argued that the Sohanian terraces are the erosional features rather than depositional terraces and cannot be associated with any specific deposits and cannot be dated. However, investigations in the Indian Siwaliks appear to confirm to observations of D. Terra and Peterson in Pakistan. Five terraces comparable to those of the Indus Sohan in the Port War region have been recognized in the valleys of the Sutlays, Beers, and Banaganga rivers in the Punjab Himachal Pradesh region. Pebble tools of Sohanial style have been collected by B. B. Lal and B. S. Karir on these terraces. G. C. Mohapatra, who discovered both Sohanian and Acheulean sites in the Hoshiapu Sandigarh sector of the Siwa Lakes, has argued that the Acheulean and Sohanian populations inhabited distinct environments the former occupying the flat surfaces of the Siwali frontal range and the latter occupied the dunes or valleys of the Himalayan flank. According to him, the Acheulean tradition cannot be older than 200,000 before present because it is only around this time date the range, Siwali range or hills, became sufficiently stable to support human population. Now come to the Acheulean culture. The Acheulean culture is named after the site of Saint Acheul in France. Evidence of this culture has been found extensively in India from the Siwalik Hills in the north to the areas near Chennai in the south. The Siwalik outcrops in Pakistan, India and Nepal have also yielded Acheulean materials. Acheulean sites are particularly densely concentrated and are richer in central India and southern part of the Eastern Ghats. B. and Misra has divided the excavated Acheulean assemblages into two stages of development, early and late on the basis of typo technology of the various Acheulean artifacts found across the country. The first and Chronologically earlier stage is characterized primarily by such core tools as sopers, polyhedrons, spheroids, handaxes, a low proportion of crudely made cleavers and flat tools, predominant use of stone hammer technique, and absence of lavalua technique 
This dish is represented at sites like Singhi, Talap Nia, Ditwana in Rajasthan, Sirki Nevasa in Maharashtra, Hanski Baisbal Valley, Anakwadi in Karnataka, and Kotalayar Valley in Tamil Nadu. The second and later stage is marked by low proportions of biphases, high ratio of cleavers to hand axes, very high proportion of plaque tools like scrapers and extensive use of soap hammer, lavalua and discoid core techniques. This stage is best represented in the rock shelters at Bimbetka and open air sites in Rajan district of Madhya Pradesh, Tirupati Valley in Andhra Pradesh, and Hangshi Baispal Valleys in Karnataka. The raw material used for tool making varied regionally according to the geology of the area. Various raw materials have been utilized by the Acheulean cultural people such as dyke basalt or dolerite in western Maharashtra, quartzite and occasionally quartz in most of the sites, limestone and occasionally basalt and granite in Hangsgi Valley in Karnataka, coarse grain granite in northern Bundelkhand. Now come to the next point, the Middle Paleolithic cultures of India. The Middle Paleolithic sites are also found extensively at different regions of India. These cultures developed during the Upper Pleistocene geological period, which was characterized by intense cold and glaciation in the northern latitudes and the areas bordering glaciated regions experienced strong aridity which might have affected the Middle Paleolithic population. Middle Paleolithic artifacts have been found in the Luni Valley around Ditwana and at Buddha Puska, all in western Rajasthan, at numerous sites in the valleys of the Balan, at Son and Narvada, and their tributaries in central India, in the Sotanagpur Plateau, the Deccan Plateau and the Eastern Ghat. As in the case of the Acheulean, the Middle Paleolithic occupations are also located at open air sites along perennial as well as seasonal streams and on the hill slopes in most parts of the country, on dune surfaces in western Rajasthan and in the rock shelters in central India. The Middle Paleolithic tools are primarily made on flax and blades and comprise side scrapers of various types and scrapers, denticolates, notes, points and borders. These artifacts are made by finely trimming the edges of the flakes and blades. However, not much is known about the use of these artifacts. In these days, as compared to the preceding Acheulean phases, tool became smaller and thinner and lighter. In terms of technology, improvements in the techniques of removing flakes from the course such as Lavalua and discoid core can be seen. Significant changes in the choice of raw material for making tools also occur in this period as the Middle Paleolithic population started using fine grain siliceous rock like shirt and jasper, besides continuing quartzite, quartz, and basal. Some of the stratified Middle Paleolithic sites studied by various scholars are Samnapur in Madhya Pradesh and Kotalaya Basin in Tamil Nadu, Port Chahal 
in 2006 suggests four features that distinguishes middle paleolithic assemblages from the lower paleolithic types. Number one, a decrease in size of the artifacts. Number two, a noticeable shift from large Acheulean bifaces to more smaller specialized tools. And three, an increase in the prepare core technique. And number four, a preference for fine grain raw materials such as shirt, jasper, chalcedony, flint, cryptochrysaline silica, and so forth. Some of the new types within the Middle Paleolithic toolkits are quartz, discoids, flax, flax scrapers, borers, all, blades, and points. Although these features are similar to other Middle Paleolithic assemblages, in the old world, the Indian evidence is typomorphologically and technologically distinct. This uniqueness compelled the earlier workers to attribute a formal name to some distinct assemblages from the type site of Nevasa, Maharashtra, as the Nevasian industry. The available chronometric data shows that the Middle Paleolithic assemblages persisted over a long period of time from the terminal middle Pleistocene to the greater part of the upper Pleistocene. Now come to the next point, Upper Paleolithic Culture of India. The Upper Paleolithic Culture was developed during the later part of the Upper Pleistocene. Archaeological evidence of this period comes from the Bilan and Son valleys in the northern Vindhyas, Satanapur Plateau in Bihar, Upland Maharashtra, Orisha and from the Eastern Ghats in Andhra Pradesh. The sites of these areas bear Upper Paleolithic tool assemblages which are essentially characterized by blade and burin tools and so a marked regional diversity with respect to the refinement of techniques and standardization of finished tool forms. The principal artifact forms are scraper, whether it may be side scraper, convex scraper, knot scraper, end scraper, stiff scraper, round scraper, convergent scraper, etc. Black blades, blade and quartz, back blades, variants, burins, and soppers. The scraper made on flax, which is a middle paleolithic tradition, continues to occur. Parallel sided blades struck from standardized prismatic cores are common in the third desert, Bilan and Son valleys, Bhimbetka rock shelters, Maharashtra Plateau and the Eastern Ghat. In the hinterland riverine ecosystem of the Eastern Ghat, the back blades components among Finnish tool is conspicuous. On the basis of the ethno-archaeological research among the tribal populations of Central India and the Eastern Ghats, on the food procurement technologies and behavior, it can be argued that prototype of traps, snares, and nets must have been used during the Upper Paleolithic period. The various types of scrapers were probably used for wood and bamboo work. Simple blades and back blades could have been used as inserts for spear points, arrow points, fishing arrows, buff, fish hook, thrusting spear, slicer knives, and daggers. 
the upper paleolithic occupations in the eastern ghats are invariably associated with permanent water bodies which suggests that aquatic foods must have been an important resource during this period discovery of the grinding stones is interesting as these must have been used for processing plant foods like wild rice in this period several examples of the development of art and religious activities came to limelight another interesting aspect of this period is the discovery of ostris axel pieces engraved with cross heads design at patni by s a sali can be considered as one of the earliest evidence of art in india there is fossil records from the bilan and son valleys southern part of elavat the mahanadi valley in central india the manjra godavari ghat and krishna valleys in the deccan include bubalas bubalis bos namadikas hexa protodon peli indicus sarva species and cani species these fauna suggest the existence of grassland environment with pockets of forest and swamps the discovery of ostris axels at over 40 sites in rajasthan madhya pradesh and maharashtra several of them dated by carbon 14 shows that ostris a bird adapted to arid climate was widely distributed in western india during the later part of the upper pleistocene Now let us come to the concluding part. The lower Paleolithic culture of India is extended to various parts of India. Most of them are explored and excavated, and different dates have been postulated by different dating methods. Likewise, middle Paleolithic sites are also found and studied in details, whereas the upper Paleolithic sites are restricted to some areas. particularly to arid zones thank you